How's everybody doing tonight? You know, I had something on my heart tonight, a story that I, it just seemed like the time was right to tell this story, and I haven't told this story uh, in a long time, um, and I think it's important. I think it's important for this day, and I think it's important for this day forward, okay? Um, and, and it's about the urgency, the urgency of the gospel of Jesus. It's a story about a tragic death. Um, a young man died. And um, so let me just go ahead and get into this. And y'all let me know what you think about this story right here. It's not my normal story, but but it, it is what happened in this instance. Okay. I'd been preaching the gospel at this time for about, about eight months straight. And the anointing in this place, man, was just so strong. I was just, it, it was in that spot where I was able to yell out through the bars and preach the gospel. And men were getting saved. And there was one man that was about, oh, he was about five cells down from me. I'd seen him before at REC, and he had turned out to be a transgender while in prison, okay? Now, I don't touch political things. I, I just don't get into that, okay? I'm about the Holy Spirit and miracles and Jesus and about bringing broken men and women to the Lord Jesus to get saved and then lead them to a life beyond that, walking in the Holy Spirit. But an amazing and very sickening thing happened about 2009 or 10, man, and they started really promoting transgenderism inside the Federal Bureau of Prisons. People won't tell you about this unless they live through it. I lived through it. And, I mean, the, the Bureau of Prisons started giving men hormone shots. Uh, they were taking them out to endocrinologists, blood doctors, and they were pumping them full of estrogen if they wanted to be. And they would, uh, they would start to grow uh, female... Uh, um, breasts and they would get thick thighs like a, a female they would begin to be shaped like a female you guys know what I'm talking about we'd never seen anything like this in prison before I'd been in prison for six or seven years when this started happening but they had passed some law up there some bill that said yeah if these guys want that they can start doing that and they would go to psychology whenever they were confused or feeling lonely these guys doing 20 30 40 years and they'd say hey you're just a you're just a woman trapped in a man's body and so they would start doing this, and I'm just telling you, it was uh, it was not good. It was not good, and um, it started to become an epidemic throughout the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Well, this man that lived about five cells down from me, he had went through that, so he had started to go through that change through these hormone treatments they were giving him inside of prison. And I'd be in there, and I'd be preaching the gospel, man, and I, I would be preaching the gospel to all the men around me, and guys were getting saved, and you guys hear the stories that I tell on here. And But this guy would always be down there kind of making fun of the gospel. His neighbor actually told me one day, he said, man, when you're up there preaching, man, I can this dude's over here making fun uh, of the situation, saying little things to me about, you know, do you believe what the man's saying, and, and just kind of picking at it. But I never gave up on the man. And I would, I would specifically make a point of hollering at him. I'd say, Angel Eyes, man, uh, why don't you read one of these books I got down here, man? You know what I mean? And, and he actually said something to me one day, Rick. He said, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't say nothing bad about homosexuals when you're up there preaching. I said, brother, I ain't going to do that. I'm not going to disrespect you like that, man. This ain't, this ain't what that is, you know. But I always would ask him, you know, hey, man, why don't you read one of these books I got down here? Because I had the powerful books, man. I had that fire, you know what I mean? I had the John G. Lakes and, and Smith Wigglesworth and Mariah Woodworth Editor and the Catherine Coolmans, and I had all that, you know, the Derek Prince books and stuff. And he would never do it. He would never, ever do it. And then one day, I spoke to him, and I said, look, man, I got a good book down here, man. Guys really like it. It's called The Cross and the Switchblade by David Wilkerson. Now, if y'all know about David Wilkerson, he's the man that started the Teen Challenge program, okay, by ministering to heroin addicts and gang members in the city of New York, Nikki Cruz and all them boys up there. And uh, he agreed to it. He said, I'll do it. I said, all right. I said, I got a man over here next to me. He's finishing it up tonight. I will have it by the end of the night. I'll have it to you tomorrow. He said, okay, that's cool. I'll start it tomorrow. I said, all right. You give me your word now. He said, I give you my word. He give, I give you my word, Rooster. I'll start that book tomorrow. I said, all right. So I get the book back late that evening. Next morning, the police come down to the cell, and they go down there, and they tell him he's got to move. And he said, no, nah, I ain't moving. He was comfortable in that single-man cell where he was at. They said, no, you got to move. we got another transgender down here that's threatening to kill himself, and we need to put uh, somebody else like him in the cell with him to watch him to make sure he don't kill himself. And Angel I said, man, I ain't going down there. I'm not moving down there. I'm short. i got less than a month left to go home. I'm not going down there. 
And they said, well, you're going down there, you can go down there hard, or you can go down there soft one way or the other. So Angel Eyes threw a fit, man, and he started throwing uh, magazines and books and all his property, his clothes and everything else. He's he's throwing it up out of the cell, you know what I mean? And, and, and just to go back to how crazy the Federal Bureau of Prisons is right now, don't take my word for it. Y'all can Google it. They are actually selling women's products in the men's commissary. In the men's commissary right now, federal prison, you can go in there and buy women's uh, uh, brassiers and makeup and nail polish and, and all that. So, you know, it's really gotten bizarre and out of hand. Um, so, Angel Eyes just throwing a fit, a, a mini riot, a one man riot, but it don't matter. The police bust the door down, they go in there and get him, and they force him to go down there and live with that dude and uh, the other transgender. I was never able to get him that book. Two weeks later, he got released from federal prison. Okay, about, about two, three weeks later, he got released from prison. A month after he was out, he got transferred out to Washington State. We were in a federal ADX down in Marion, Illinois. The cops came over to, to the tier, the guards, and they said, man, we was just looking on the computer, and uh, Angel Eyes got killed, man. I said, no. I said, yeah, he got killed. He got out. The, the article in the, in, on Google said that he got out. He went to his ex-girlfriend's house, the girl that was his girlfriend before he came to federal prison. And she wouldn't accept him back in. She wouldn't let him in the house. I mean, this man had been transformed in prison. He had grown breasts. He had lost his mind, you know. And she wasn't going to let him in. She called the cops, and they came over there to, to escort him out of there, and he just wasn't going for it. And they got to arguing in the driveway. They pulled pistols on him. He made a fast move, and they shot him in the chest and killed him. And um, I don't really know why that story was on my heart tonight, but I think the main reason was because it was one day. It was one day too late. That man would have had that fire of David Wilkerson down there in his hands, man. He would have been reading the cross and the switchblade. And who knows what God would have did with that anointed book. It could have changed his life. It could have led him to Jesus. And instead, they moved him that very next morning, and he ended up getting out, and he ended up getting murdered. You know what I mean? Or killed by the cops. However you want to say whatever it was. I don't know. I wasn't there. You know what I mean? But um, I just wanted to share that story with you all because I believe that... Sometimes there needs to be a little bit of desperation when it comes to sharing the gospel with our unsaved uh, friends and, and family members. And if you know that you've tried and you have shared the gospel with them and you wasn't able to reach them, then you need to get in there in desperate, heart-wrenching prayer and ask God to put bold, truly godly men and women in that person's path that they will listen to and respect. Say that prayer over and over for them every day. God put... Put people in their path that will preach the gospel to them that they'll listen to and respect. Do that, Lord, please, because it makes a difference. And when and a prayer like that, God honors it because it's not a selfish prayer. It's not like you're asking the Lord for a new house or a car. You're asking them to put godly people in the path of an unsaved person. Okay? So I just want to share that with, with the group right here. Uh, you know what I mean? Praise God. We don't know if the man died unsaved. For all I know, he could have got out of prison, went straight to a church and got saved. I just don't know. But I know that that opportunity was missed by less than about eight hours. Because if they wouldn't have came and got him that day, that book would have been down there in his hands. And I would have let him take it to the other unit with him to go get transferred to that other cell. He would have had that book. So I just want to share that with y'all tonight, man. And y'all be blessed. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back on it with a positive message. We're going to get into teaching about the baptism in the Holy Spirit later on this week. So I just want everybody to be blessed, man.